Hi, I've just been reading Nassim Nicholas Taleb's book, The Black Swan, fantastic book, and there are some really potent lessons for marketers. Essentially, a black swan is a rare event. It's big impact, rare, unpredictable, and yet we try to retroactively fit or retrospectively fit justification to explain why it occurred. If your forecasts are less than 100% accurate, there are some great lessons in today's show. Well, firstly, I haven't really been reading, I've been listening. These days, for me, all of my books are audio and my radio has become podcast, but that's not the point. Let me give you the theory of the black swan that it won't take more than 30 seconds, and then I'll make the point that I think affects us as marketers. Talib makes appropriate apologies to Western Australians, my fellow countrymen, uh, about black swans, because over there they're prolific, but everywhere else in the world, a black swan is seen as a rare bird indeed something of a freak of nature and therefore unpredictable. So that's his metaphor. Now, in regard to the black swan, basically it's this really rare event that has a huge impact. Now he tears apart the typical Gaussian bell curve and basically what he's getting at there is that whilst in theory certain data aggregate around a mean, think about the person's height, right? So I'm six foot tall, 183 in centimetres, and I used to be tall, these days that's not so tall, but there is a mean height for a male. Now, people tend to deviate from, from that mean by pretty predictable amounts. Think about the absolute shortest and the absolute tallest. They're not that far from the mean. They're not a thousand times the mean, they might be half or twice the mean, actually less than that. So pretty modest deviation from the mean. So we've been taught in schools and in universities about basically understanding data and its regression from the mean, its deviation from the mean. That's fine for the example that I just gave, but think about the reality for us as humans. If you're a, let's say you're, a, you're an actuary in a large insurance company, the average life expectancy is an important piece of data and the deviation from that mean is an important piece of data. But for us, an early death or a long life are markedly impactful events. Most things in life are thus and the big issue is that we've basically been suckered into this belief that everything clusters around a really nice mean. Think about your forecasts, they're never accurate. The reason why I think is a lesson for us today. Most of us miss our forecasts by miles every quarter. Deals slip, deals stagnate and then disappear into obscurity and when we do make it across the line, that is when we make our forecast, it's often because we've got a few big deals across the line that may not even have been forecast at the beginning of the quarter. So is forecasting a mugs game? Black swans everywhere. I believe not. It's that we have the wrong data and we have missing data and bad behaviour. Winning deals have a pattern and so do losing deals. The time taken for a buyer to move between each stage in the buyer's journey is a great indicator of the chance that you're ever going to win. What do we need to do? I've got five quick lessons for you. Modify your CRM stages to use the stages in the buyer's journey not the sales cycle. That is, it doesn't matter what you've done to them, more what matters is where they're up to. Second, keep your CRM data up to date and in particular, the journey stage. Three, learn what the pattern of a winning and losing deal is. Especially, look at lag, that is the time taken to move between each stage for a winning deal versus a losing deal. Fifth, calculate, try fourth, calculate the probability of winning from the data, not from your salesperson. That is, is the pattern of a particular opportunity following the pattern of deals you tend to win or deals you tend to lose. And finally, increase your chance of bluebirds. Let me explain that last one. A quick rant on branding and positioning firstly. In consumer marketing, they spend an inordinate amount of time making sure that their brand is positioned in a unique and defendable place. 
great, good move. In B2B, because we don't have the advertising budgets, we tend to do a little bit of brand, which frankly falls on deaf ears anyway, and then a fair bit of effort on demand. The issue isn't what does the buyer think about you, if they're not. If the buyer's not thinking about you, it doesn't matter what they think about you. The issue is we need to be positioned in the category. And by that I mean, there's a term that salespeople often use, the considered set. Basically, when a buyer goes looking for a product or service like yours, you need to be one of the three that they think about. We need to make sure that we are positioned for the bluebirds. So we're gonna manage our data cleanly so that we can actually predict what's going on and we're gonna position for the upside as best we can. Positioning in the category is key. So if getting on the radar is important, how do we actually do that? It's remarkably simple, but it's not what most of us do. Identify the categories that you want to be positioned in. Are they product categories? Are they problem categories? That is a buyer looking for a particular solution to a particular problem. Think about what the categories are and do that together, marketing and sales together. ID those categories. Find out what everybody else looks like in that category and if you're not already a member of that category, you need to look like them. Use the same language, look the same. If you're not already in the category, don't try to look different, look the same. If you are already a member of the category, then find a unique place and make sure that everything that you say and do evidences that unique place. The most important thing is to know whether you're positioned or not. If you are positioned, then to find a unique place and make sure that everything sales does and everything marketing does reinforces that position. But if you're not in the category that everything sales does and everything marketing does makes you look like one of the members rather than to try to communicate your point of difference. Because it doesn't matter what they think about you, if they're not thinking about you at all, it is about being in the considered set or as we would say, positioned in the category. Being positioned though is just the first step. There are other steps in the journey. Once they know who you are, what's next? And you do need to plan those steps. Do that in your funnel plan. If you don't already have a funnel plan, you can get a free one here. Go to funnelplan.com, get a free funnel plan. Make sure the tactics that you've chosen help you to position, identify what position you're trying to hold, and then identify what tactics you're gonna to use to move them through each of the other stages in the buyer's journey. Again, if you don't have one already, go to funnelplan.com, get yourself a free funnel plan from there. In the paid version of funnel plan, you can do one other thing as well that I referred to earlier. Connect it with your salesforce.com instance, download the data from your salesforce.com instance, or in fact, synchronize them, anonymize data, of course, and it'll tell you what the winning pattern and losing pattern of deals looks like so that you can compare your opportunities to that. Take a look. Again, free version, funnelplan.com. Lots more lined up for next week. Until then, may your funnel be full and always flowing. Our thanks this week to Nassim Nicholas Taleb for The Black Swan. I'll include a link in the show notes here to finding that book on Amazon. Hannah Sivalingham for her production. Uh, amazing as always. My name's Hugh McFarlane and it was my absolute pleasure to script and present this week's show.